All right, Jesse on fire. I know everybody's been waiting for this one. Well, at least a lot of people, because I've been getting blown up the last couple of days. Dude, when are you going to talk about the James Krause thing? Right now. Right now. And I am going to hypothesize that this is not going to be the last time I talk about this. Not by a long shot. Because this, as some people may not realize yet, is going to be the biggest story of the year, probably, in terms of, well, I don't know. I didn't actually do a big... uh you know, I didn't do a big inventory before I said a thing like that. All I know is uh, nothing like this has ever happened before in uh, in the UFC. And I don't think people can wrap their brain around how big a deal this actually is and uh, and what the actual repercussions are going to be. Um, now, if I wanted to be a, uh, you know, a, a, the type of person that gloats about my predictions, you know, as I do like to do sometimes, I might go clip the uh, scene from when I did the video right after the Derek Minor fight. This is actually before I even realized James Cross was his coach. Whoever got that information, they told the wrong person, dude, because they told someone that told everyone, right? And people just started flooding money in all over the place. And now they're gonna, dude, they're gonna get caught. Like they're gonna get caught. It was too obvious. It was way too obvious. And I'll tell you exactly why, but this goes way. Dude, that fight right there, this whole thing with Minor and then ultimately, like I was saying, I didn't even know Krause's coach at the time. But, uh, you know, this thing is so much bigger than that. So James Krause is in really serious trouble. Really serious trouble. So much trouble, in fact, that I would assume that his... Uh, I'm just not... Like, I'm not looking to pile on to his problems right now. Let's just say that. But... I am a person who talks about the news and uh, and I do it in a way where like there are just some things that I know about, you know, like there are just things that I know about. As an example, how criminal investigations tend to go and how people who are put in the box tend to behave as in uh, people who can either nap, nap, nap or, mm, 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 you know, what the odds are that people are going to talk, talk, talk or have already talk, talk, talk. And in this case, I think I have a pretty good idea of what they're talking about, too. So, uh, yeah. I mean, listen, I've made pretty clear on this channel. I will never be a person who breaks this. Like, like, if I knew something that was going to lead to someone having further criminal charges put on them or had any chance of that happening, I would never talk about it on here. Never. Absolutely never. And if I was something that was going to, like, nuke someone's career... And I was the only one who had the information. I would never talk about it on here. Never. I would never talk about it, period. You know? I don't like rats. And I don't like this. However, news that is inevitably going to get out, without any shred of doubt, the fact that I know where this is going sooner than other people, well, I don't have any ethical problem with that. So uh, we're going to talk about it. Now, before I get into the details of this uh, calamity, if you are new to this channel, this is the deal that we make. If you watch my videos, you have to subscribe to the channel. And when I say you have to, I mean, you don't have to. It's on the honor system. But like, this is a store where I give away, give away free candy and I ask for a 25 cent tip that I can give to the kids. The jar is at the front. You know, you can just take it and leave, but it's kind of a prick thing to do. The jar at the front is you subscribing to the channel. It's free. It costs you nothing. Okay. I work hard, I create the content, I go and I investigate things, find things out, and I bring them to you. It's a fair trade. So subscribe to the channel, and I appreciate it. Also, I would love to hear what you guys think about this, so go ahead and comment and like, etc. I'm also going to throw an ad in here real quick because that's what I do. Now, I know it's Christmas time, and everybody is struggling trying to figure out what they're going to buy for their friends, their brother, their guy friends. What am I going to get this guy? I'm going to answer that for you. You're going to get them a Ridge wallet. And the reason you're going to get it is because it is awesome. Everyone puts their cards in something, whether it is a wallet or in my case before a rubber band. Okay. This is actually what I, I recreated this just for this, for this spot. So you guys can see how janky what I used to do is look at the size. It's exactly the same, except now it's in this slick little willy and I can put my money in it also. I love this thing. I genuinely, genuinely love this. I'm a man bag guy. I even wore it for this. Look, and I just go boop, just like that. And it's gone right until I need it. 
I love the Ridge Wallet. And from now until January, what? December 22nd, you can get up to 40% off when you go to ridge.com forward slash Jesse and you shop, you get one, you get two. And honestly, people always ask me, they're like, hey, what's your cash app? What's your what's your Venmo? They want to just send me, send me money. And I'm like, don't do that, man. I don't want your money. I just want you to enjoy the content. If you want to support the channel, let's do us both a favor. Buy yourself and your buddies a Ridge Wallet. That way you get something out of it. And so do I, because I love this sponsor and I want to bestow this, this quality on you guys. So again, that is ridge.com forward slash Jesse. And you'll be like me. You'll be like Mexican martial arts. You'll be like Chael. All of us roll Ridge wallets. That's just a fact. That's a fact. I can promise you that because regular wallets suck, man. And that's what most people use. It's only because they don't know how awesome Ridge wallet is. So go get yourself one and Merry Christmas. If you skip it, I don't. So you know, again, that, that one, look, I'm not trying to torture anybody, but I would appreciate it anyway. Uh, so let's get into this thing. So here's the deal. Obviously, if you guys can't connect all these dots, let me tell you what the dots are that we're dealing with. You have James Crouch coach. You have the Derek minor fight where you have a fighter who clearly went in injured and threw the fight or went in knowing he was going to lose and fought anyway. You had an investigation into that fight, okay? You have a, prior to that, prior to that, you have a memo going out that says that no fighters or coaches are allowed to bet on UFC anymore, okay? I don't think anyone realized that those things were connected, but they are, almost certainly. Then you have uh, a larger investigation opened into the minor thing. Then you find out that, that Krauss has an investigation onto him like a much bigger investigation just into him. And then you find out that Ontario in Canada just banned gambling on UFC fights. Now to put into perspective how big a deal that is, okay, provinces in Canada are the same as states in the United States. Now, if, uh, I don't know, Hawaii, let's say sports gambling was legal in the United States. If Hawaii was like, no more sports betting in Hawaii, you'd be like, ah, it's inconvenient. But whatever. If Nevada, on the other hand, was like no more sports betting on UFC, would that be a big deal? Because that'd be a pretty big fucking deal. Okay. Ontario is Nevada in Canada. The vast majority, it's the biggest betting province by a mile. Okay. And they banned people taking action on UFC fights. Okay. The state, the, the province of Ontario, the equivalent of Nevada in Canada banned people taking bets on UFC fights. You think they did that because one fighter threw a kick then pretended to be hurt or, uh, you know, pretended he wasn't hurt going to a fight? You think so? You think that's how that happened? You know, you got a federal investigation into a dude who has a discord group where he uh, gives betting tips based on his, uh, you know, his years and years of expertise. And look. The guy does have expertise, obviously. I'm not questioning his his uh, his coaching. I'm not questioning anything about his ability to coach, to read people, to read fighters, to make good predictions. I'm sure his subscription to this thing was probably worth it. As a matter of fact, now I bet you goddamn fucking right it was worth it so that he would give you picks and they were probably right a lot. But I had heard rumblings that this dude was flossing. And for those of you who don't know what flossing means, it means showing a lot of money, like a lot of money. You know, that's the thing about being in a, you know, in a community like this, right? Like I'm in the combat sports community, right? But you motherfuckers don't know my money. You know what I mean? You don't know my money. You have no idea what kind of money I've made. I mean, I talk to you guys about, you know, like, oh, you know, the story. Like, you guys know enough about where I was when. But you guys don't know my fucking money. You have absolutely no idea where my money came or comes from or what I'm probably packing because I'm a grown. Like, I'm way past where you can, you know, we're like a fighter who was fighting professionally and then slid into coaching, owns a gym. Like people basically know their money for the most part, right? Like, I mean, they could, they, I mean, they, they know their money, right? 
So if a dude starts showing money like Conor McGregor and they're like, what the fuck? You know, like he's got a different Rolex for every day of the month. He drives a fucking uh, a McLaren and a G wagon and some other shit. He, somebody said he owns fucking 50 houses or some shit. You know, you start looking like what the, where is this? Where is this guy's money coming from? Because pretty sure we can all back in, you know, there's enough about fighter pay for everyone to back into what he probably is doing with his fighters. He owns a half, you know, he owns 50% of his gym. You know, he's not doing fucking McLaren and 30 house money. You know what I mean? Like people know your money. People know your fucking money. That's, that's the, it's a closed community. And he was flossing, flossing, son. Big boy money. And, uh, you know, so people ask questions, right? He's got this betting thing. And then recently he came out, he said, yeah, I make, you know, I make much more money betting than I do on coaching fights, etc." It's like, are you sure that that's a thing that you want to put out public, dude? You know what I mean? Like, it'd be one thing. If you kept your money in a lockbox, put it in a bank or put it somewhere where people can't see it because you say a thing like, oh, I make more money betting than I do on fighters. That can mean anything. You know what I mean? You have a handful of fights each month. You get, I don't know exactly what percentage, I call it 10% of the purse. You're doing well. You're doing good. You have some big fighters. You're doing fine. So let's say you made 12 grand, you know, 20 grand that month. And that means that, damn, people get back into their all, damn, this motherfucker's making like 10, maybe even like 30 grand a month on betting. Good for him, dude. Wow. You start showing McLaren money, people are like, how the fuck is this guy doing money where he's driving around a million dollars in cars? Like betting? If your money is dirty, that is the problem with dirty money. You can't spend it. Okay, if your money's dirty and you have not a large amount of it, then it doesn't really matter because no one's looking at you, dude. Okay, why do you buy a McLaren? Well, I take that back. A McLaren is probably actually really fun to drive. Why do you buy a G Wagon? Okay, anybody ever drove a G Wagon or been in a G Wagon? It fucking sucks, dude. It's like a Jeep that you pay fucking 200 grand for. I am not a fan of the G Wagon. Okay, if you got people are some G, and I'm not hating on Krause's car. I'm saying like I've been in a fucking G wagon, and I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> Why the fuck would I buy this for a quarter million dollars? Explain it to me. It's like a Jeep with a Mercedes in- interior, which is a taxi cab in Europe. Okay, you get a G wagon to floss on people, so that people look and go, "Fuck, dude, this motherfucker's driving a G wagon." And translation, that's your ego again. And on this channel, I always like to bring back to how your ego will fuck you. Will fuck you right in your goddamn mouth every time, dude. Your ego brings nothing good to the table. It is the it is such a destructive force. And people look at me, they're like, how is this guy talking about ego? That's because there is a massive difference between confident and ego, okay? Everybody has an ego to a point. But confidence is not ego, not the same thing. And like the desire to have people fucking eyeballing you up and down about like about your fucking cars, that's your ego, dude. Because the only thing it really does is make people jealous. You know? Fuck, I wish I had that goddamn car, man. Now, if you're flossing that because you want to fuck women, that's different. You know, that's a different thing. That's, that's, you know, I, I mean, it is. If you want to drive, like, if you want to drive a whip around that's like, that's fucking boss shit and you're doing it and in your own mind, no one knows, like, no one knows what your motivations are. So I'm not even putting motivations on Kraus, but you know, okay, you know. So if the reason why you want a fucking sick car is because you like the idea of people looking at you and feeling jealous, that's your ego. And that's pussy shit. That's what a pussy does. Okay. Like your ego, like I say, like that guy's got a big ego. I'm not saying like, oh, wow, what a, what a, what a solid dude. I'm saying he's a pussy. 
who gives a fuck. It's not, not even who gives a fuck about people being jealous. That's a, that's a, that's a repulsive fucking desire, dude. Why would you want to make people jealous, dude? Okay. It's like, it's, it's honestly, it's exactly the same thing as like uh, a, a kid who gets beat up at home, you know, who gets bullied at home and they feel like shit and they're mad and they come and they like beating up other kids and making them feel like shit. They're all, yeah, fucking made him feel like shit. Feeling jealous and envious is a horrific feeling, especially for people who are actually financially struggling. Like it's like a jet, like financial struggle is a fucking nightmare. Everyone knows that because everyone's gone through it for the most part. It's horrendous. It's the worst thing ever. And so for you to want to pull an emotion like envy out of people who are financially struggling is psych. Not, it's not like psychopathic. It's fucking pathetic, dude. Why would you want to make a person who's not doing as well as you feel bad about themselves? And again, I'm not saying Joel Cross is doing this. I'm talking about why the ego is bullshit. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. I like a nice car. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I like a nice motherfucking car. But sometimes you buy things that you shouldn't when you really shouldn't, you know? And if Krause is showing the money that I heard he was showing and his money's dirty like it is, or sounds like it is, I don't know for sure. We'll talk about the rumors shortly. That was not a good decision. Not a good decision. So here's what I have heard, okay? Okay. I've heard that uh, Kraus may or may not have been running a very large, uh, what's the right word, sports betting operation. We're not talking about making picks here, okay? Talking about making book, okay? Like making book, as in not he's going to, he's not like just like, you know, going to the fucking Vegas and putting down bets. He's running a sports book, except an illegal one right, is what I've heard. He's being investigated for. I'm not saying he did it. I also heard that he had kind of like a multi-level marketing thing going. Maybe. This is a, this is the rumor that's on the street. So again, I can't verify this, nor would have I, like, even if I knew for sure, I wouldn't, but I don't, and I really don't know for sure. I don't think I don't. I mean, look at, if I got put in the box and they were like, so tell me about his operation. This is true. I'll tell you this right now. If I got put in the box, Someone put a, you know, put the screws to me and they were like, tell me about his operation. I'd be answering totally fucking honestly where I'd be like, everything I've heard is third hand, dude. I don't know shit. If you put me on the stand, I would look like a fuck. I, I would make you guys look like fucking morons. Why'd you put this stupid asshole on the stand? He doesn't know shit. He heard all this from other people. True. That's exactly what would happen. But I did hear this from other people. Multiple other people. Enough so is why I feel comfortable talking about it on the channel because this is going to get out, dude. I heard that he had other people running smaller books that rolled up to him. Okay. Small timers, some bigger than others, but small timers who were running illegal sports books that all rolled up to him. Now, do you know who else does that? You ever heard of like a half sheet, you know, oh, this guy's running a half sheet for me. That's what the mafia does. Okay. That's how the mafia runs illegal gambling. Okay. You got the house. The illegal house, and then you got people, half sheet, you bank the sports booking, they go out, they find people that'll bet, you split the losses with the person who goes and does the book. It's a really simple fucking format, you know? It's kind of a silly one, given that anyone could just go online and bet online, but there are a lot of dunskies that don't know how to use fucking Bitcoin, you know? So if you're too stupid to use Bitcoin, maybe you have a bookie. I don't really understand what the point of having a bookie now would be. Uh, but yeah, so, but this is a tried and true old sports book way. You got people underneath you. Now, I also heard that maybe some of these people with half sheets are in the fight business. Okay. Like kind of right around the sport. Okay. Now, a lot of them young, potentially some potentially around the sport, the reason that that's relevant is this, okay? The feds took his his laptop and his phone, okay? He's going to have everyone and everything in there. Now they had to have they had, they had to have a reason to take it. 
You know, I know the feds seem like they just run around and do whatever they want. And in the case of like, you know, this really high level shit, they probably just get a nod from the fucking president. They're all, hey, go to Mar-a-Lago and just go grab all the classified documents that he has. They're all, why? They're all, you know exactly why. Midterms are coming up. Let's say he's stealing nuclear secrets. But like in the real world, outside of fucking political theater, you know, they have to go and get a warrant for things like that. Now, one thing I would say is minor turns out, it sounds like he only got a three month suspension while uh, Krauss has been <laughs> not only banned himself, but has been told or that all his fighters have been told that if they have any relationship with Krauss going forward, they're not going to be able to fight in the UFC. Wow. Tough decision for a professional fighter. They're all, no, nah, I think I'm going to go down with the ship. I think I'm going to go down with the ship. Uh, I'm going to just never fight in the UFC again so that I can, uh, be loyal, you know, to my buddy Kraus, who is almost certainly going to prison. Now, look, I'm not saying I wouldn't respect that, but I wouldn't because that'd be fucking idiotic. I always respect loyalty moves, but that's just like, I don't think your buddy would ask you to do that, dude. You know, really makes you wonder about that. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to open that fucking Pandora's box again. Cause I did another story that involved Kraus recently. Somebody's wife Totally unrelated to this, though. I don't think she's running half sheets, given who her husband is. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. So, why do you think that Minor only has a a three-month suspension while his coach, he's the one that went in there injured and, you know, I'm saying through the fight, but I guess more what I'm saying is, uh, went in knowing he was going to lose. How does he only get a three month suspension while his coach has been blackballed from the UFC? Riddle me that. Hmm. How do you think that happens? Uh, here, do a meme of me singing like a bird. Okay. He's talking. He is talking. That's why. Okay. He did what you would call a flip. He's flipping on Kraus. He is talking and look, I don't know how this whole thing went down. I'm just going to speculate that uh, the person with the sports book and the gigantic motivation to uh, make millions and millions of dollars on a fight where he knows the outcome might have put a bug in Miner's ear about his injured leg and said, look, man, here are your options. Again, this is hypothetical. I have no information on this. This is for real. I don't. I'm just speculating, you know. Hey, listen, man, here are your two options. We can let him know you're hurt. Okay. Push the fight back. You know, you fight in three months. Uh, Listen, I mean, I can loan you a little bit of money to get through. I know you're really struggling. Or uh, what are you set to get paid for this fight? Uh, 25, 25, 20 and 20. How about you go in there? Uh, You do your best for the first minute, minute and a half. No one's expecting you to win. As a matter of fact, can expect you to not win. And, uh, Instead of making 20 and 20, I'll pay you uh, 160 uh, under the table. So you go get your 20, I'll pay you 160K. What do you think about that? Well, I don't understand. I mean, listen, dude, you need health care. Your leg is injured. Is it fair that the UFC is not doing, it's not paying, he's not taking care of people's health care, right? I mean, listen, dude, it is what it is. Okay, the world's not fair. And, and honestly, they don't pay you enough. Now you got to go sit out again. I'm trying to I'm trying to give you a lifeline. Now, the smart question would have been like, well, how much money are you going to be making on this? You know, actually smart money would have been like, yeah, I think that I don't want to throw my career away permanently. Uh, can you t- let's talk about that loan? <laughs> But it sounds like that pitch was good enough for Miner to take the dough and uh, go in and throw those kicks. And then and then he talked just like every single person with a half sheet is going to talk. They're all going to talk. All of them, dude. They're all going to talk. OK. You put someone who's a fucking 24 year old or a fighter, whatever. OK, like, do you understand how? small a deal it seems like if someone like in the fight community 
there are very few people who are like, I mean, that's not, not very few. There are a lot of people actually who went to college, got a four-year degree, were wrestlers, came out, went to, uh, went into the fight game. But there's a lot of people who didn't a lot. Okay. Who don't know things like I do and like other people do like as an example that it's a bigger deal than you think if someone's like, listen, dude. So, you know, look like, yeah, I take, I take action on, I take action on sports and I, and look like if you know anyone who likes to bet, here's how that works. I give you the lines, you take them to them. If they bet with us, then anything that they lose, we split, you know, <laughs> he's all 30, 70, 30, <laughs> you get to keep 30% of whatever they lose. Like, Oh, but you wouldn't have that business if it wasn't for me. Right? Yeah, that's right. 30% for you. Cause I'm the house. I feel like 50, 50 probably be fair. Anyway, it doesn't matter what their split is. Okay. But that doesn't seem like a very big deal. Does it? Sounds like someone like word of mouth. You're like telling your friends, you're like, Hey man, I know like a really great place where you can pay these actions. Like they pay cash the next day. You don't have to worry about like international shit. Like all these betting houses are all bullshit, you know, internet, like who knows if you're going to get your money. It's like, well, I mean, if you've ever sent money with Bitcoin or done anything, I mean, like you're going to get paid out. Listen, let me tell you some horror stories about these international fucking casino. Like you don't listen one minute. You got all this money in there. Uh, let me tell you a story about a guy I know who had 50 grand in one of these accounts and never got it back. And dirt, like you want to deal in cash. All right, I'll give you my action. And then boom, you know, they connect them. They're taking action. They take the bets. They lose. Boom, they get paid out. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal because they have not really had a lot of experience. and haven't thought it through. Okay. And in all honesty, it's a, I mean, let me just actually play this out for you. It's illegal gambling, bookmaking, wire fraud, and tax evasion. That's what you're looking at. And I'm talking about the half sheet people. Okay. The half sheet people are looking at wire fraud, uh, bookmaking, you know, illegal gambling, whatever tax evasion. So what does that look like when they put them in the box? You know, they sit them down and they go, let me tell you what you're facing. And they start talking about maximum sentences for things like that. Now, is it likely they would get those? Of course not. But do you think they're going to roll the dice to protect the, you know, the coach that told them it was no big deal and who's going down anyway? No, they're going to talk. They're going to talkity talk, talk, talk. Okay. Talk. So they're all going to talk. Uh, And here's the other thing. I don't know how much of this I should talk about, but uh, how much do you guys know about? Making money that's dirty, clean. Lots of ways to do it. Lots of ways to do it. But that's called money laundering. Uh, He's probably going down on that also. You know, probably going down on that also. And then there's this other thing that mm, I actually really shouldn't probably talk about this. I'll see how this plays out. I'm not going to be the one that breaks this part of the story because this is enough. This is enough, but he actually has even potentially bigger problems than that. But talking about that is, uh, you know, it's a little too borderline for me. So look, I don't have, I have no problem with James Krause. I think he is, he made some shaky decisions on his money spending. Uh, Really shaky decision on this on this Derek Minor thing. Here's a here's the thing I really want everybody to ask themselves. You think that they got caught the first time they did it? You know what I mean? You think they got caught the very first time that uh a fight was a work in the UFC? I will say this that was the most obvious, most embarrassing work of all time when it, like honestly, I, I I think like you know I know there there was talk about the line moving so much. I think I would have been on to it anyway, because I was on to it I, I, immediately. As soon as I saw you know the, I like oh the line move you know the line doubled, and then I watched the actual fight. I was like oh this will work for sure, and that's the only time I've ever seen a fight in the UFC where I was sure it was a work. And I'll tell you exactly why. It's because he went in there, he threw a kick, and was injured instantly. 
He stood up. Okay. He clearly, his leg was very, very compromised. He stood up. And then what was the next thing he did? Threw a kick with the same leg. Threw a kick with the same fucking leg. Now, I know you guys have seen this movie a few times. Does an injured person favor the thing that they are injured with? You know, you break your leg is the next thing that you throw a broken, your, your broken, of course not. And your pain response would, would inhibit you from doing that unless you are making a calculated decision, which is I'm going in there. I'm injured. I already have an existing injury, but I'm going to go out there and I'm going to just pretend to dirt. And then I want to make sure that I can justify how it looks in the MRI or in the fucking x-ray afterwards. And so he did it twice. Dumb, da dum dum dum. But yeah, three months suspension. That's pretty, uh, pretty light, huh? Pretty light for uh, something that is leading to Ontario banning betting. Here's the other thing I wanted to tell you. Ontario banning betting on the UFC is a fucking enormous deal. Enormous. And Dana is going to fucking hang whoever is responsible for that. And so this is not going to end well, dude. This is not going to end well for Kraus. And I'm not wishing that on him, dude. I'm like, I'm really not. I really am not, dude. I do not wish ill on other people ever. I just don't, dude. You could, you could scour my videos. You got, you could hear me say a thing like that and, and go, that's impossible. And I'll be like, Hey dude, I have a lot of videos. Why don't you go ahead and look through them and find me one where I wished ill on anyone. You know, because that's not a thing that I do unless someone really earned it. And being reckless, <laughs> you know, high risk, high reward and then getting caught. That's that is certainly not something where I'm like, yeah, he deserves what he's going to get because I don't believe he deserves what he's going to get. Because what he's going to get is going to be. I mean. He's going to jail for a long time. He is going to go to jail for a long fucking time. And, you know, I look at videos of him. He looks like a, a street smart, sharp guy, excellent at reading people. He'll do he'll be fine in there. You know, in terms of like survival and being a victimized, he'll be fine. But it's still fucking jail. OK, that makes that makes prison nine point five worst thing ever versus like, you know, ten point five out of ten worst thing ever. Knowing you're not going to get fucked by a prison gang. It, like that's like, you know, that's always everyone's like, I, you know, like, you know, thought number one. Spoiler alert. None of us are getting fucked in jail. OK. Like if you watch my channel, none of us are getting fucked in jail, dude. OK. We'll go in there. Someone will press us and we'll break their fucking arm. Doesn't make jail any better, dude. OK. Well, it makes it, it actually does make it better, you know. Being someone's blow up doll, I don't think that that punishment fits any crime for the most part, with a few exceptions. But jail is the fucking worst thing ever, dude. They lock you in a fucking room for 10 years, okay? 10 years. 10 fuck, like, I mean, I don't know for sure what he's gonna get. It's gonna be a lot of time, dude. But just to put it in perspective, like, you get your black belt in jits in 10 years or maybe a little but like, I don't know, average nine, 10 years. Okay. And that's going to the gym a couple hours, you know, like, at, I don't know, 90 minutes a fucking day. They put you in the box every minute of every day for 10 fucking years when you go to prison to try to even wrap your brain around the amount of time that is is fucking impossible. That's why like when you hear like, Oh, a guy got three years in jail and people kind of scoff at it. I'm like, it's three fucking years, son in jail, dude. But he ain't getting no three. I, I think he's headed for a worse outcome than that. The feds are on him. I could tell you one person's husband probably is not feeling that bad about this. You know, probably feeling pretty good about it. I feel a little bit more comfortable about you uh, traveling on the road again. Listen, I believe you. I believe you. But I'm still feeling much more comfortable with you going on road trips now. 
now that your boyfriend is going to jail. Anyway, love you guys. Peace.